In today's video, we're going to take a look at a few current or ongoing YouTube mysteries. I probably could have done a separate video on each of these, so if anyone's interested in a closer look at any of them, let me know and I might do so in the future. Around 10 years ago, Eleanor Cohen started uploading videos to YouTube of herself singing either covers or songs that she'd written herself. At some point, however, she stopped uploading and has deleted many of her videos, leaving only six. Her channel is currently at 10.6 thousand subscribers, so she never became huge, which is surprising as she was very talented. But she did, and still does, have some loyal fans with comments on her videos being posted as recently as a few days ago. No one really knows for sure why she stopped uploading. I mean, she never made it huge. She had around 10,000 subscribers, so she didn't have a huge following, but she was there in like the early days of YouTube before it became as saturated as it, as it is now. So I think if she'd have stuck at it, she probably could have made it big. Two different accounts have tried to steal her content and pretend to be her. She has responded to these, but that's the last public interaction I could find from her. Apparently her subscribers received a notification a few months ago of her latest video, which was uploaded around six years ago, suggesting she may have at least checked the account recently, but it is impossible to say whether that was her or someone else on her account. Many YouTubers have abandoned their channels over the years. Maybe they just felt it wasn't going anywhere or felt too under pressure being in the limelight or maybe other commitments prevented them from continuing to make videos. Any one of these things could have been true for Eleanor, but why wouldn't she let her subscribers know? Some of her fans believe that the reason behind this may be that she had a stalker. User ePlanet had posted about Eleanor before. He seemed to have an obsession with a handful of celebrities such as Katy Perry, Taylor Swift and Lord. You can find a number of posts on various different websites from this user that sound delusional, possibly hinting at him suffering from schizophrenia. He even filed a lawsuit against Lord, with the nature of the suit being listed as racketeer slash corrupt organisation. Anyway, back to Eleanor. ePlanet claimed that he had increased her following five or six fold. For all anyone knows, this might be true. I don't believe 99% of what he has posted, but I could buy him promoting her channel. Maybe he gets a bit obsessive, so Eleanor distances herself and this angers him so he tries to slander her. Since she disappeared from YouTube, there have been a couple of strange comments left on her videos. One from ePlanet claiming that Eleanor is no longer alive, and another from a different account, or maybe just an alt, which is just bizarre. The comments are pretty unsettling, but there is no evidence to suggest she died or anything. It does seem possible that the harassment from ePlanet may have played a part in why she disappeared from YouTube, but if this was the case, why did she re-notify people of a video she uploaded six years ago? Though I suppose no matter what happened to her, this is still a pretty strange detail. It's even been suggested that Eleanor Cohen is a pseudonym, which sounds quite plausible as there's barely any information about her whatsoever online. Hopefully she's doing okay and she's still making music out there somewhere, but maybe under a real name. As far as I can tell, ePlanet hasn't posted in around four months, so Hopefully he's got the help he probably needed. Around three months ago, a channel by the name of We Are The Ones Who Live Within The Lies That He Tells posted a number of strange comments on a music video. A month or so later, the channel uploaded its first video titled Welcome. It was simply one of those text-to-speech readers saying the following video is brought to you by Balloon on Industries, thank you. There are a few other videos uploaded to the channel, one of which being an advertisement to men, which showed coordinates which were found to be in Germany. Another video, advertisement to women, showed coordinates which were in Brazil. Satellite photos of these locations didn't really show anything of interest, I think it was just remote areas in the middle of nowhere. Balloon On are pretty responsive on YouTube and also Reddit. When asked about the company, they will respond stating that they are a business specialising in online courses with the goal of helping the user achieve full consciousness. 
The business is supposedly non-profit and was founded in March 2020. As far as I'm aware, the courses are not yet available, but there have been links to files to download, which were seemingly random pictures. One of their videos offers $500,000 for any information about a Caleb who is falsely claiming to be a representative of the company. The only information they have about Caleb is that he has a New York accent, is in his 20s and has blue eyes and brown hair. This hardly narrows it down. <laughs> According to a Google Doc written by someone who has been following the situation, I'll link that in the description, Lunon Industries believe Caleb may have been involved in the disappearance and murder of Joey, one of their employees. It is believed Joey went missing from the coordinates in the video advertisement for men and his body was found at the coordinates in the video advertisement for women. Caleb is believed to be associated with an organisation, the ones who live within the forest. Next to nothing is known about them. So it's all a bit mysterious and there's not really much information to go off yet. Some people are theorising this might be some kind of cult. I mean, the online courses that they're going to start offering with the goal of achieving full consciousness, and that sounds quite culty. In the video, Advertisement for Women, the text-to-speech reader says, you can spot us easily by looking at our orange cloaks, which again, sounds quite stereotypically culty. To me, this definitely sounds like some kind of alternate reality game or ARG. I think 99% of these mysteries turn out to be, so it's pretty safe to assume most of the time. A couple of the things they've said should be able to be verified. For example, they claim to be based in North Carolina. However, there's no record of their business on Google in that state or even in any other state in the USA. I don't even think there's mention of any company under that name anywhere. They have said they're a startup business, so maybe they're just not fully established yet, but you'd think they'd have to be kind of established to be able to offer $500,000 as a reward for information about Caleb. But at least the claims about Joey should be verifiable. I did try and do some research, but obviously this wasn't easy with such a lack of information. But as expected, searches came up with nothing relating to anyone, let alone a man named Joey, going missing from Jimunden, I think it was, in Germany, and the body showing up in Tocantins in Brazil. I guess this doesn't definitively mean it didn't happen. I mean, not all missing person or murder cases are reported or get media coverage, but considering clearly people realised Joey was missing, he wasn't just someone that didn't have any contacts or didn't have any family or friends or anything. People knew he was missing. And surely there'd be a police investigation to determine that he was murdered. Unless Blunon just did their own investigation, but again, as a startup company, I don't know if they'd have the resources for this. For these reasons, I'm presuming this is an ARG. I mean, it could still be cult related. Maybe it's an already established cult that just decided to put out an ARG just to draw people in. Or maybe it's just an ARG that's cult themed, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, it's all pretty intriguing and I'll be following the mystery as it develops. I might end up doing a full video on this at some point, depending on what happens in the future, so if you let me know if you'd be interested in that. So I thought I'd finish with quite a light-hearted one. I'm sure everyone's heard of Troom Troom, but if you haven't, it's a YouTube channel which focuses mainly on life hacks and DIYs. The thumbnails are always clickbaity and the videos themselves are very cringy and very over the top, sometimes even a bit unsettling. And the hacks, if you can even call them that, either just don't work or take longer than the normal way of doing something. They've suggested everything from using broccoli to create freckles, to using Coca-Cola as hairspray or eyebrow gel. Just generally really bad hacks that no one had ever used. I mean, I kind of think it's a mystery in itself how this channel's so popular. They have 18.9 million subscribers and the most popular upload has 120 million views. Trim Trim wasn't always so weird and cringy though. It started out as just an average DIY crafty kind of channel. But I guess over time they just found a niche and it worked for them. There are many other similar channels such as 5 Minute Crafts which is another pretty iconic one which just churn out so much useless content and a lot of people like to theorise what these channels are, why they even exist and how they're so popular. 
There's even a subreddit dedicated to solving this mystery, but users only seem to post every now and again. Some people theorise that the videos are set in an alternate reality due to the abnormal nature of the videos and the storylines. Some people suggest it's a genuine attempt at DIYs. I mean, I personally think it has to be satire, surely. I mean, just so many people watch these videos now because they're so bad. I don't think anyone actually watches them to learn some useful life hacks. It's undoubtable that they'll earn quite a nice amount of money from these videos. One source estimated at the start of the year that Trim Trim makes seven million dollars every year. And I guess why would they make videos any different if what they're doing now is working for them? But aside from the strange content, it's also a mystery who's even behind the channel. What is known is that Trim Trim is a Ukrainian company. People have found the Instagram accounts of some of the recurring characters such as Redhead and Blue Eyed Girl. The name of the guy the Trim Trim website is registered under is also known, although I don't know if this is his real name or maybe a fake one. The identity of the producer, or two producers according to some sources, remains unknown, and it's not really known why they would hide their identity. I mean, it's probably nothing nefarious, they're probably just embarrassed to admit that the behind the mess that is Trim Trim, but who knows. I'll link the subreddit down in the description, which is probably the best place to follow the mystery if you're interested. So that's it for today's video, I really hope you enjoyed it, if you did please consider liking and subscribing, I'd also be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.